Good morning, everybody. As we go to the Chita, so today we're holding the portion of Achrei Mois, which is in the book of Yikra, the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verse number one. God spoke to Moshe Achrei Mois after the passing of, of the death of the two sons of Aaron. Because Rasul of Hashem, they came close to God via Musu and they died. Now she says, What does it teach us? The specific after the, the the passing of the two sons of Aaron, uh, Rabbi Lezim and Isaiah illustrated the answer is a parable to a patient. When a physician came to visit, the, vicious, the physician said to him, do not eat cold foods. Do not lie down in cold, damp places. Then another physician came, another, and then another physician came and visited him and advised him, do not eat cold foods or lie down in cold places so that you will not die the same way as so-and-so. The one who warned the patient more effectively than the former. The second guy told him you're going to die. Therefore, the Torah tells us after the death of the sons of Adam, God, uh, God effectively said to Adam, do not enter the holy in a prohibited manner so that you will not die. You'll, you'll, not, you'll, you'll not die as your sons died. God spoke to Moshe. Adam, speak to Adam, your brother. He shouldn't always come into the holy, especially to the holy of holies, in front of the, the, the cover, the tent of cover, the cover of the tent, that's the door, that's the entrance to the holy of holies, which the Oren was in, and he will not die. Because I will appear over the ark, I, I'm in the holy of holies. Now she says, so he should not die like his sons died. Because they came to went to places they shouldn't have gone. Well, the Yamash Shimu Bak, if he does come, he'll die. He bought an edit. <coughs> For I continuously appear there with my pillar of cloud. And therefore, since my divine presence is revealed there, he must be careful not to accustom himself to enter. This is a simple meaning. Our rabbis have uh, interpreted. As follows, you shall not come ex except with the cloud of incense. That's what it means. Only when the, when you brought the as we're going to learn in Achim Mosh the, the 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 laws of of Yom Kippur. Only when he comes in and he brings in the fire pan with the gatotus with the incense which made a cloud in the in the holy of holies. That's when he's allowed to come in to to the holy of holies. Verse number three. This is the way Aaron shall come into the holy. The part of Mbaka when he brings a young bull for a sin offering, lachatos va'yelo'ila and a ram for a for a burnt offering. Now she says bezois, not usual Rashi to do this, but he gives a gematria, numerical value. Bezois is four hundred and ten, which allusion to the number of years at the first temple, who would stand when the kehanim were righteous as like Aaron. And it was Aaron who lived all, or it was, it was as if Aaron lived all these years and entered the Holy of Holies, the 410 years of the Second Temple already, the Kahanim were not so uh, perfect. He shall wear a holy linen. A holy linen shirt and a linen pants, like a regular Kayan. He doesn't wear the eight garments. He only wears the four garments. And he shall greet himself with a linen sash. And he shall wear a linen cap. Big day Kodesh. This was special made for him for, your whole, for that day. Before he wears these garments to go into the Holy of Holies, he shall go to the mikvah. And then he shall put them on. Rashi says, by enumerating only four garments of the ordinary Kayin, the Torah informs us that the Kayin Gadol does not perform the service on the Holy Day of Holies. A young Kippur at certain times wearing eight garments, which he performs the service outside the Holy of Holies. For those garments contain gold. And a prosecutor cannot become a defender. Since the Kayin Gadol enters the Holy, since the Kayin again Gadol comes into the Holy of Holies, to defend the Jewish people. Therefore, he was not allowed to wear gold. He only wore linen, like a regular kain. Totally pure, so to say. Kain, that's one of the reasons why we wear a kittel, a white kittel on Yom Kippur, to symbolize the kain gadol, 
who wore a linen white garment, totally white garment over himself. These garments shall be purchased from the holy treasure. Should be bought only for that day and, 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 and that's it. Yitznaif, as she says, uh, the Taiga uncle is, is, says, Yitznaif is Yechais Beresha. He shall place it upon his head. The similar, so he placed Matanach, his garments, Yitznaif. As she's looking at the word Yitznaif. Barachat Bamaim. And she says, on that day, he's required to immerse himself every time he changes garments. And in total, the Kayin Gadol changed his garments five times. When he transformed from the service inside the Holy of Holies to the service outside. And from the outside to the inside. So he, at, any, at every change of garment, he required a mercy to mikveh. Once, and to sanctify his hands and feet twice by washing his hands with the water from the waist, from the wash stand. Once when he removed the garments, he wore. And the second time when he donned the new garments. So he went to the mikveh five times and he washed his hands and feet ten times. And for the Jewish people, you shall take two, uh, two he goats. One for a sin offering. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, two two he goes for a, a sin offering. And one ram for a burnt offering. And Adam will bring the sin bull offering, going back to the bull, which it was his. And will come and bring forgiveness to him and to his family. Which mentioned above in the verse number three. And scripture refers it to his, to his, teaches us here, that the bull had to be purchased by Aaron's own money. That bull needed to be purchased, not by the Beis HaMikdash, but by Aaron HaKoyin. He had to bring the bull because it was for him. Rather than the public funds. <laughs> now she says he confessed. And that's why you'll remember the Yom Kippur services, that he confessed on his sins and those of his household. And then he took the two he goats. And he put them before, he brought them before God. Pesach, which was at the, at the tent of meeting. Verse number eight. And then Adam took, he put on these two he goats, he put lotteries. One of the lottery was to God, being a sacrifice in the temple. And the other one was for the Azazel was to be taken to a hard mountain, and now she says. So now she says he would place one he-goat on his right, one he-goat on his left. Then he would insert both of his hands into an urn, which contained two lots, one bearing the inscription to the God, to the Lord, and the other one to Azazel. These lots were mixed up, and Aaron, with both of his hands inside the urn, took one of the lots in his right hand, the other in his left hand, and he would place them upon the he goats. The one who placed them on his, uh, on his right hand on his right hand was to the scripture to the Lord, would be to God, who was sacrificed. And the one upon which he placed his left hand was Tazazel. And usually that's what happened. The Gemara said that it was, if they were righteous, it always happened that the right hand was to God and the left hand was Tazazel. What's Tazazel? Now it says it's a strong, hard mountain with a high cliff. As the Torah tells us later, as there was Eretz Gezeda, meaning a cut off land, a sheer drop. High mountain with high, extremely rough terrain. Verse number nine. And I don't shall bring the ego, which the lottery says for the Lord. But as a chattis, he brings it as a chattis. Now she says, when he placed the lot upon it, he designated by calling it a sin offering. Verse number 10. And the he goat, which the lottery said for Azazel. Yamad Chai, it stood alive. Lefne Hashem before God, Lechapel Allah, to bring forgiveness upon him. Lechalach Oisel Azazel, which he ultimately sent it to Azazel. Amid Baro, which was in the desert. Now she says, what does it mean, Yamad Chai, until he gets Azazel? He's standing alive. To be understood, like Yamid Chai, Yamid is a, 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 a passive form, meaning that the he goat was stood up by others. Thus, the Taigam Chanzi Yukum Kad Chai, it should be stood up while alive. 
And what does the verse teach us when it says a lie? Since it says he sent him to Azazel, we do not know whether it was sent away to be killed or remain alive. It doesn't say what happens. Therefore, the Torah tells us shall be placed while still alive, meaning that it's placed, that it be, it be placed while it's still alive and shall remain alive only until it's sent away. From here we learned that it was sent away to its death. It was not sent away like the Tzipur Achaya was sent away in the field. This was sent away to be killed on this mountain. Now she says to affect the tone of him upon him, meaning that he had to confess. And that's where you learn the concept of confession. The concept of confession by the Torah that you have to confess when you brought a sin offering. Verse 11. And I don't bring his sin offering, his bull, sin bull offering. And he shall bring atonement to himself and his household. And he shall then slaughter his sin offering. It's very hard. You need to learn the Gemara to know the sequence of events over here because the Torah goes backwards and forwards. Exactly. It's hard to know exactly. You have to know how to learn the Pesukah very well over here. That's why you need to learn the Gemara Yuma to know exactly how this whole thing went. Now she says, this is a second confession besides the state in the verse number six above for himself and his household, and for himself again, and for his brothers, all of whom are called his household. There was two different confessions, one for personally himself and his personal family, and then for the family of Kahanim. But here we see that all the Kahanim receive atonement through the sin offering of the bull of the Kayin Gadol, and all of its atonement is ex ex exclusively for the filament of the sanctuary and the holy things. The Kayin, if the Kayin forgot that he was unclean, and he entered the sanctuary, and he ate the sacrifices. As the verse says, it shall affect atonement for the holy, for the defilement of the children of Israel. So this mainly was brought on Chas V'Shalom, which could have happened many times that a person didn't know that he was unclean. And he came to the base of Mikdash, and he ate the sacrifices, etc. Saved by the Kihanim, saved by the regular Jew, etc. This could have happened many times if a person didn't know that he was unclean. Look, and it made me never knew that he was unclean. Look, uh, that's what we say on Yom Kippur, to the, the Avedas that we know and to the Avedas that we don't even know that we have done. We can go throughout life not realizing that we did in a sin, God forbid, because we don't know. And then he takes a pan full of burning coals from which from the altar. Before God, he takes a handful of incense. Samim, play some daka that was very thin. Behavior, and he takes now these things and he brings it into the Holy of Holies. Now she says, Malam is back from the outer altar. Because the outer altar was in the side of the altar from which to the entrance of the Holy of Holies. No, the entrance of the Holy. So he made sure there were five different, there were five different fires on the Holy, on the, on the Mizbech. He took it from a certain fire that was facing right to the door of the tent. Daka. Why does the Torah tell us that we had daka that has to be fine? Was not the incense fine? The Torah says that, in, that you shall crush them finely. Daka mina daka. <clears throat> so rather, the scripture is telling us here that the incense was to be the finest of fine. For on the eve of Kippur, they would return already crushed incense to the mortar and they would do it again. Daka mina daka. So that's what the Torah tells us. That every, all the incense was made fine, but this was fine of fine. The, the incense that were brought is brought into the holy of holies needs to be fine of fine. Nasa he takes the takes the katatus, he puts it on the fire. So again, he had to carry this pan. This was a very difficult avoider. He had to practice. This is extremely the Gemara says that this was one of the most difficult services in the temple for the Kayan Gadol, that he had to do this. And Yom Kippur was extremely difficult to do, and he had a lot of practice to do this. Because he went in with us like Teres Alaish. So he went in with his pan and he had to take the, from the incense and he had to put it on the fire. Then the cloud, the incense, the cloud, a cloud of incense shall envelop the, the ark cover and it's over the of uh, over the over the tablets of testimony. And now she says from inside the pan. 
If he didn't do it the way it was supposed to be done, now that's why they would practice with him over and over seven days before Yom Kippur, and they would make sure that he knows how to do this service. Then he goes and takes from the from the some of the bull's blood. And then he sprinkles from the top of the ark. Came by the eastern side. And before the ark cover, he sprinkles it seven times. When Adam from the blood, that's on his finger. Now she says, one sprinkling is meant. Thus, once above and seven below. Verse 15. This is all brought down in the Avedah. We say on Yom Kippur. Then he takes, he slaughters the ego of the people's sins. And he brings the blood within the dividing curtains. He brings this blood also into the Holy of Holies. And he should do with the blood what he did with the blood of the bull. He sprinkles it on top of the ark one time and seven times below the ark. Now she says, for the, what, the bull, what the bull atones for, the kehanim, namely the fine of the sanctuary and the holy things, the he goat atones for the Jewish people. And this goat was that was, was, the, one, was the one upon which the lot of the Lord was fallen. Rashi says, Achas Lamaila, it was sprinkled one time above, Veshev Alamata, and seven times below. Verse 16. And this shall affect atonement. Both these two goats, not the goat, one bull and one goat, shall bring atonement upon, upon the holy from the defilement of Ism. To all their sins. And so it shall likewise be for the tent of meaning, meaning Hashech and Itam, which dwells within them, to Muslim in the defilement of the Jewish people. Now she says again, this is a tone for those who, while in the state of uncleanliness, had entered the sanctuary. And it's never became known to them that they were unclean. As it says, the Chol denotes unintentional sins. She says, actually, this comes to atone also for the state of uncleanliness willfully entered the sanctuary. Just as he had a sprinkle for the blood, both of the bull and the he goat inside the Holy of Holies, one sprinkle above, seven below, shall be a sprinkle from the blood, both of the bull and the he goat on the dividing curtain on the outside, once above and seven below. Hashem and Itam beseif to Masam. Now she says, although they are unclean, divine presence always rests in their midst. Verse seventeen. No man shall be in the tent of meeting. When Anan comes to bring forgiveness in the holy, at say say until he leaves, the chipi badoy he'll come and bring forgiveness forgiveness to himself. Will be at say comes to bring forgiveness. To his family, to the Kehanim, and it comes to bring forgiveness for the entire Jewish nation. And that completes the Chumash for today. We're actually going to read Pasha's Achimais two weeks in a row this week and next week. Because Achimais, we don't read the Shabbos, we read it next Shabbos. So we're going to read, actually, learn this Pasha two weeks in a row. We now go to the Tanya of the day. And we're holding in chapter 41 of Tanya. And the Alter Rebbe is explaining about the connections that happens when we do a mitzvah. While he's putting on tzitzis, his kavona should be, he should have a kavona, he should have intention be, what, what the Zoya writes, what is the kavona? What should be the intention one puts on a talis or tzitzis? Laham machus is that he draws upon himself the, the, his blessed kingdom, which the kingdom is over all works. Nevertheless, even though God is the kingdom of the world, we should intend and endeavor to focus God's kingdom, especially, especially, especially over ourselves. We're trying to bring, not that the Melech, the Abish is a Melech of the world, God is my king. 
for the commandment of tzitzis, particular effects, enhancements of one accepts in the yoke of heaven. Because that's like putting on yourself. It's the only mitzvah you put upon yourself. You wear the yisim So the, the mitzvah tzitzis is such a, it's a simple mitzvah, but it's a mitzvah, it's not, not like any other mitzvah. It's something pushed you wear upon yourself 24-7. So that's the beauty of this mitzvah. That you be able, every other mitzvah you put on tefillin, and then the rest of the day you don't wear tefillin. So you don't, you don't have the mitzvah upon you. Here you have a mitzvah, I have a mitzvah that I put upon myself, and when I walk in the street, see what I put on tefillin I'm doing in my house. Most mitzvahs I do in, my, in a building. Here is a mitzvah, I, I push it, walk around, and it's a mitzvah that I walk around doing in, in the world. So what does that show? That even though God is the king of the world, but in this world, he's, he directs his kingdom upon me. The Abish is my melech. And where do I show that? That I walk in the street and I'm wearing my tzitzis. And not only I'm wearing my tzitzis in a way that it's upon me, which I feel self-understood, but also the Lidisim, I wear my tzitzis outside. So I'll be able to actually see the tzitzis as I'm walking in the street, as I'm wherever I'm walking around, I see the tzitzis. I see Kabbalah's El Macho Shemaim. It reminds me of, of, of accepting the yoke of heaven. That I'll remember all the mitzvahs of God when I see this tzitzis, when I see these strings hanging upon me, or I feel this tzitzis is upon me. And that's same Tosim Alecha Melo. That's the meaning of the thing. Put upon yourself a king. Doesn't say put upon them a king. Alecha. The Rebbe knows the verse implies that, that, be, that before one sets a king upon himself, he has no king. And it's he who now sets a king upon yourself. So him toss him alecha mela. It's an interesting expression. I mean, the Abish the king of the world, whether I'm his, whether, whether I accept upon him the king or not. So the truth is, that's the truth. You can say the Abish is the king of the world. Everybody believes God's the king of the world. The question is, so him toss him alecha mela. Is the Abish is God the king of, of, of Zalman Bukit? That's really the question. And my tzitzis, Shows that the Abish is a king over me. That's the Kavana. That's why I, I put on my tzitzis to say that the Abish, the God, is not only king of the world, he's the king over me. In this such case, meaning having contemplated this manner, then even though after all this meditation, no dread or fear descends upon him in a manifest manner in his heart, nevertheless, since he accepts the kingdom of heaven, but this gallus machshafti retainer of mecha, and he draws upon himself the fear of him in his conscious thought and rational volition. The kabbalah zi zu he amit his blish himself again. This submission to God and his fear of him is beyond doubt sincere. Al Tereb validates this all. He says, "Listen, why would somebody put on tefillin?" Why would tell me we're titties a whole day? Because he posh it, understands that's a mitzvah. He accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven. For it's the nature of a dual Jewish soul not to rebel again to bless the one holy king. So the Torah that he studies and the commandments that he performs because of the fear of, uh, because of his submission to the heavenly yoke. And because of the fear that he has drawn into his mind and termed, is termed a complete service. So the al Rebbe says, maybe it's not a complete service to a tzaddik, but to me it is. And therefore it is. It's a complete service of the kind that can result only from the fear of God, as al Rebbe soon goes on to say. It's a service. You're no better. And it's no worse in the service of any slave, any servant that does the service of a king. We are the servants of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And if we do have great contemplation or we don't have great contemplation, we're doing the service of God. So to a servant, it's a service. You can't go to a servant, to serve as a king and say you're not a servant. He is a servant. Whether he has the comprehension of the greatness of the king, whether he has the, doesn't have the comprehension, he's a simple person, he's doing the service of the king. When a year does the service of the king, he's doing the service of the king. And by him, it's complete. And it's, it's a very powerful expression. 
And he look at the, the tiny, he puts it in parentheses. Aveda Shlema. It's a complete service. Don't diminish a person's service. Don't diminish your own service. Because if you do it, because you want to serve God, then you're, you're in the service. All this can, can be accomplished by arousing, by arousing, even if only in the mind at least, a minimal level of fear and utilizing it in the study of Torah and performance of its commandments. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. It's complete, that completes the time of the day. Today is the 13th day of the month, which is chapters 69 to 71. Chapter 69 to 71. If you do those three chapters, you would done the chitas of the day. Wish you all a great day. Mitchum today, we're not going to have a Tanya class, <clears throat> but I'll see you in Mitchum tomorrow. Um, uh, Mitchum tomorrow at uh, 8 o'clock, we'll continue the chitas. I want to remind everybody who didn't sell the hummus, please, to do it today. Have a wonderful and beautiful and happy and healthy day.